Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. I'm just trying to catch up on some stuff while I had some free time here. And uh, one of the things I want to talk about was Scream or oh, shit. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And I just want to catch up on some things here before I put out my first impressions, uh, you know, reaction stuff. Uh, I actually recorded something when I left the movie uh, earlier. And now that I'm home, I was like, you know what? I can squeeze a couple things in and I'll save my first impressions to go up tomorrow. Whenever this video drops, the next day or maybe later this night, you know, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. I'll try to, as depends on how work goes and how much editing I can get done tonight. Um, but I'll try to get all these up to you very quickly. But before we get into my first impressions of the movie, I want to talk about two comic books to kind of wrap up some things we were, you know, discussing lately. So the next two episodes are comic book episodes. And the first one is going to conclude Extreme Carnage. And this is the Cool Silence cover, which actually the comic store did not hold for me <laughs> so i'm so glad i got there when i did because it was near the end of the day and there was one of these left on the shelf and i grabbed it and when i looked at my pull list there wasn't one this was not in there so uh thank goodness i found it on the shelf because <laughs> i was like man that would suck to get all eight and then on the ninth one not get it um so anyway so i'm glad i got it you know just to have it and so we got our new symbiote on here so it was funny because actually eddie's mullet uh, texted me and said um Hey man, you're going to eat some major crow when you read this book, but I think you're going to enjoy it. It's good crow. And uh, I, I guess I'll eat a little bit of crow on this. Um, if you go back and watch my last episode, uh, last episode, and by the way, we're going to get into full spoilers. So before I do, I'm going to go ahead and throw up the digital code. Boom, right there. First person to put that code in will get a free copy of Extreme Carnage Omega, the final chapter, chapter nine or eight or seven or whatever chapter it is. I don't even know anymore. Um, it's the final chapter of this. So, you know, enjoy it. Let me know if you get the digital code down in the comments and let me know what your review is down in the comments too, because we're going to get into full spoilers here. Um, I think Eddie was like, you know, yeah, you're going to eat some crow, but it's okay. Like you, you'll, you'll enjoy that you ate it. I mean, I'll, I'll eat a little crow here because when I'm reading this, it, it this is still a badly edited book as you know. Um, now, I will say something did kind of catch me by surprise, but not really. If you go back and watch my review of, um, you know, Extreme Carnage Alpha, I had mentioned I wish they put a symbiote on Hank. Well, they do. <laughs> so I kind of kind of saw that coming or was hoping that would come and it did. Um, and then also uh, with Hank, uh, I was saying how he was sent in blind and it made Flash look like a real D-bag. And then also the trash talking Andy and him did about Hank. It was light trash talking, but it was still trash talking. Uh, they said he was kind of a, a screw up and stuff. So um, that still happened. Uh, you know, Hank was still white in one comic and black in the, in the next comic. Um, he, in one comic, he said he wasn't being tailed in the next comic. He said he was being tailed or vice versa. Like, yeah, he said he was being tailed first. And then the next book, he said he wasn't being tailed. So it's still bad on the editing level on that regard. I mean, having, making one or two of those mistakes is one thing, but come on, like <laughs> just five or six mistakes. It's, it's uh, like, that is, is, is pretty bad in my opinion. It's just a lot of oversight is, is what I'm saying. So, um, but as far as the crow eating, I, I think he was saying like, oh, you know, Flash doesn't look as much of a D-bag because he actually did have protection for Hank. Yeah, but he didn't tell Hank that he had protection. Um, and he knew that he was sending Hank in unprepared and that's why he sent that backup. It still doesn't explain why they, you know, at the end of the one issue, they were like, we got to go save the president or stop this senator or whatever we got to do. We got to go do it now. And then it says one day later, like, again, like it's still not great. So with those past issues behind us, I was hoping, okay, well, Eddie still liked this issue. Maybe I still will too. And I do, it's a, it's a decent ending, but I don't love it as much. I think uh, Eddie and a couple other people I saw online talking about it, I think they love it way more than I do. Um, this is just okay. I was like, okay, it's a decent issue. It's fine. But you have Crane out there. And sorry, my AC's kicking on. It's so hot in this apartment. Um, so I'm sorry for that. Sorry for the extra noise. Um, but uh, Crane is, is you know, he's given his speech. And uh, Silence and, uh, you know, and Flash and, uh, and Toxin are heading there to, like, you know, be on the lookout or whatever the case is. Uh, I don't know why they're not already there. I mean, they knew where he was giving his speech at. Um, but Hank, like I said, he was killed in the last issue the last issue ended with i think it was phage um uh, phage, well, no it wasn't phage it's a uh, riot i think um who killed him i think it's riot uh so uh so anyway so yeah he kills him and then actually hank stands back up and then kills riot cuts his head right off uh which is interesting i was like okay straight straight up riot's dead now i guess um and 
it turns out that Sleeper is actually hanging out on Hank and without Hank knowing about it. So he was able to resurrect Hank. Like the wounds were, you know, harmful and, and definitely would have killed Hank. With, but Sleeper was already on him. He could instantly heal him. So Hank is like knocked out unconscious and he is uh, being piloted by Sleeper, which is kind of cool because that reminds me of when Sleeper was first introduced in First Host and he was like on a dead body. <laughs> he could still move the body around, but he didn't really need a host. And that's what makes Sleeper a little different. But I like the use of Sleeper here. And that's great. And the fact that Hank is getting a symbiote and a sleeper is awesome because i was thinking he was going to be lasher or phage or one of the life foundation ones and i actually kind of forgot about sleeper and it makes me wonder in that last issue if sleeper was that extra symbiote that was hanging out in the hive although i felt like that would have tipped off uh you know uh, cletus cassie or carnage i should say he's not cletus cassie anymore um or there's another symbiote it could have been i still think it was an error but it could also be the extremist symbiote, I guess. But we're going to see that here in a second, too. So, um, but basically, this is a big fight. I mean, uh, Crane is given his speech, and then in the middle of it, he gets cut in half by Carnage, who is bonded to his son, Arthur, as we revealed in the last issue. And Arthur, it turns out, has had a, a closet full of skeletons forever. I think this was just like a rushed way to make another psychopath um, because they just give it all an exposition in this book. Like Arthur, oh, he, he you know, killed cats when he was a, a kid. And then when he got older, he started killing homeless people. And then when he got into college, he was killing women or whatever. And uh, his dad, as a senator, would help cover it up. And so he's always had this, you know, skeletons in his closet. So he's always been a broken, evil person, much like Cletus Cassidy. And that's why the Carnage symbiote is, you know, likes bonding to him. Uh, because it was going to just bond to him and then bond to the senator because it, that was a better play, you know, for the strategy of whatever they're planning. But uh, but then it bonded to Arthur and it realized, oh, Arthur's a real sick puppy. I think I'll stay here. So that's why he's on Arthur and he cuts his own dad in half. Yeah, very gory. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, so then the other Life Foundation symbiotes that have kind of given in to Carnage and are being puppeted by him, I guess in a way. Some of them are there by choice, like Agony and stuff. But some of them have to be like piloted, I guess, by Carnage. And they're just cutting loose. They're just killing people. And I'm like, this was the big plan was to rile up the the you know friends of humanity again, get them to hate aliens, and then just literally kill people and just make them actually you know hate aliens. They already hate aliens. And then doing this, it's like what to, this converts more people to the cause, I guess. But I don't know. I I don't know what the long term plan for this. Maybe the writers here do. I mean, they probably do. Um, so there's most likely going to be more stuff because as eddie said when he texted me this book sets up a lot of great ideas for future stories i agree it sets up future stories i don't know about great ideas uh, you know but i think it does set up future stories so i definitely agree on that one um but so you have all the symbiotes fighting it's just a big bloodbath and then sleeper actually gets uh the one up and i believe he fights phage um all of them are just kind of squaring off against other villains Nothing really, you know, obviously it comes down to Flash and, um, and Carnage, and uh, and the Guardsmen are there, and they're getting killed. I mean, Carnage rips one guy's head right off, Guardsmen's head off, um, and then Toxin and Silence are there doing their thing, and I think Silence fights Agony and uh, gets the one up on her, almost kills her, but doesn't. Um, and I think Toxin almost kills a symbiote and, and doesn't, but they're basically there separating the, the, the symbiotes from their hosts and capturing them as well. And again, we're getting the flashback while Flash is uh, talking to Arthur. That's when Carnage is revealing Arthur's past and all the horrible things he's done. Uh, and then out of nowhere, because this was not part of the plan at all, Iron Man shows up and he blasts Carnage and he's like, okay, I'm, I'm here to help out. And he's like, I got this extremist symbiote tech that uh, I've been studying and I, you know, I think I know how to use it now. And so I'm coming in to help save the day. And I'm like, okay, that's great because he was he was he was in the first issue and then he kind of gave the the task to flash and his, i guess and flash delegated some part of it to hank and then now he's recruited andy and other people so now tony's coming back in and he literally just comes in to hand the suit to the carnage i mean it's so lazy i mean like Car uh, t tony is not he's an idiot in this scene like he's definitely dumbed down he's in over his head he comes in the symbiote is being talked to by carnage that's why i think maybe it could have been the sixth symbiote in the hive without tony knowing it because tony's not always piloting the suit it's kind of hanging out by itself so who knows where its mind goes so that could have been the sixth symbiote in the bar in the last issue again i still feel like it could have been a mistake or an oversight by the artist but if they said, oh, that that's the sixth suit, I would be like, okay, I guess that makes sense. Um, so anyway, Carnage can take control over it, 
and then he rips it right off Tony and then bonds with it. And and now Carnage has a null symbiote Grendel dragon thing that he's bonded to. And I guess even though it wasn't part of the plan to bring Tony there, but I guess maybe he talked to the symbiote in the hive and had and that put the idea in Tony's head to come, but they don't really say that in the book here. So maybe that could be the no prize I win for connecting those dots. But uh, but either way, it's just like it happens. He gets the symbiote and he's like, this all right, you know, my plans went perfectly. You know, I, I just slaughtered a bunch of people here. The symbiotes got loose. I, they served their purpose. I'm going to get away now. The only one I'm going to rescue is Agony. And, you know, Carnage and Agony are going to get away. And, uh, you know, whatever. I don't know why. Like, doesn't, I guess he's not connected well i guess arthur was kind of had feelings for agony in a way so maybe that's why it did it even though it's not bonded to arthur anymore yep actually big reveal there uh it kind of left arthur and just bonded with this thing and now it's a grendel dragon carnage symbiote thing who cares I, that, I, that's kind of how i feel about it um but flash get, you know he gets in a couple shots on carnage but it doesn't matter because carnage got away he outsmarted all the heroes uh, they're all kind of dumb <laughs> and like there's uh the day is not really saved a lot of people died although flash says hank if it wasn't for your intel more people would have died and it's like okay yeah i guess that that's fine but um but a lot of people did die and then the guardsmen show up at the end just raining down to save the day and they're working obviously for alchemex and they help trap the symbiotes and bring them to dr steve at alchemex uh, so they do capture some of the symbiotes not all of them. I think I'm pretty sure Riot's dead, or at least the head was cut off. Um, so I don't know like fully what that means. Uh, it says that they contained Lasher, Riot, and Phage. Um, so I guess they still have the Riot symbiote, even though its head was lopped off. But I guess the symbiote can still go back together. So Doctor Steve has them, and he and uh, but he's it looks like he's experimenting on them. And even Andy and uh, you know and Bran, I think his name is the kid who's taught the new toxin. You know, by the way, Flash recruited a little kid <laughs> and brought him into battle. Flash is just looking like a real D-bag in these, like very irresponsible. Um, because he he brought in a kid. He almost got Andy killed, um, or he wasn't there in time to save her. Um, and then he got Hank killed, but luckily, you know, he put Sleeper attached to Hank so that you know, he could, so that Hank wouldn't die, I guess. Um, and then they say some dumb line. I hate when writers do this. When, uh, you know, Hank's like, yeah, he's like, I guess I got knocked out. And Flash is like, yeah. And he goes, but don't worry, you know, if there's there's still more work like this for you in the future, if you want it, you can have it. You know, I'd like to work with you again. And Hank's like, sure, which I don't know why. Hank, Hank's life was put in danger. Um, but, uh, but he says, yeah, sure, I'll sign up for it. And he goes, he goes, but I, I got to just be more careful next time. And Flash says something dumb like, well, I think there's more to you than you realize, Hank. And you're just like, oh, God, cringe. Uh, <laughs> it's just a dumb line. Um, so anyway, I don't know. I write dumb lines, too. I'm, I'm not trying to harp on, on the writers too much. But I just, I, I wasn't blown away by this book. Um, I think some people were very excited about it. And there is good in it. But to me, like, I think there's enough bad to where I just don't love it a lot. You know, I just kind of like it. It's it's an okay series. and But what it's setting up, I really don't care. Like, I was hoping to uh, be excited for maybe a Flash miniseries coming up with Andy. You know, like a Agent Venom and Silence, now that they're both kind of anti-Venom-ish. Um, I was looking forward to something like that uh, and maybe see where this Friends of Humanity thing goes. But really, I'm not that interested, to, to be fair. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of back and forth on it. it. It could be good, maybe in other writers' hands, or maybe if just Philip Kenny Johnson, maybe just him wrote it, or, or Lissa Wong, like just one writer, and not like this jumbled mess that was this, you know, crossover. I just wasn't a big fan. But, um, but Arthur's still out there, and apparently no one's going to just say he was Carnage. And that's my thing with this book. A lot of the drama is coming from bad TV writing, where they're like, Flash is like, you know, even Andy says, look, you should tell Hank that Sleeper is attached to him. And he's like, I will when, when, when the time is right, but I just don't feel like doing it right now. It's like, really, that's it? Like, you're not going to tell your friend that you attached a symbiote to him. Okay, awesome. Uh, why, why the unnecessary secrets? Why isn't, uh, you know, Tony Stark or someone coming out with information about Arthur and exposing him uh, now that his father's not there to protect him, they could probably look through the files and see that his dad paid people off and try to cover things up, and they could out Arthur as a bad guy. But they don't because they need him for future stories, uh, and they need him in the senator role. So he looks like he's going to take his dad's spot, I guess, as senator, even though I don't think that's how that works. I think he starts to run, so maybe he's still going to run. I don't think he was just given the job, although I think they do say he was just given the job. 
I don't know what's going on, but he has Gemma still, uh, you know, the person who's agony. And he's like, please, I'll do whatever you ask so I can have Carnage back. And she's like, you know, we were going to kill you, but he does seem like he has more use for you. So fine, get on your knees and beg, and maybe we'll use you again in the future. And then that's it. They, they set up Arthur, um, the psychopath that they created in two pages, <laughs> you know, as opposed to Cletus Cassidy, um, who, uh, you know, was created in a little bit more than two pages, um, but got fleshed out really quickly. This was we'll reveal him at the end and oh yeah we got to put his backstory in at the end and it was just so tacked on and just for the sake of a twist but a twist that i don't really care about uh, you know this is not like i said it's not a terrible terrible book um and it's not a great book in my opinion and that's just my opinion obviously every you know there's gonna be people out there who disagree with me who think i'm you know being too snooty or snobby or you know i'm too you know whatever sometimes people say like oh like when you review things or discuss things it seems like you're 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 when you're negative on stuff you kind of are talking down about it and it's not really that i'm just like it doesn't thrill me you understand like uh, like this stuff reading this issue it didn't thrill me it didn't get me excited the first issue kind of got me pumped up and i was like all right i'm on board with a flash story this hank guy seems neat i'm interested to see what they do with him um and then hopefully they bring in andy and they did soon after and so i was on board in the beginning and it it just kind of lost me throughout the way and so in the end here i will say it was okay it's an okay series if it comes out in trade i would say if you're a flash thompson fan or an andy fan for sure definitely pick this up but in this last issue here everyone just kind of is in a fight and they just kind of have a few lines of dialogue to make it feel like it's them as a character but it's like really bad dialogue and you don't really dive too much into what andy is now as silence you don't get some of that not that we need all the answers now but it's just like there's some cool things here that could have been explored more in this series and then build on that in the next series. But this they just kind of went with, oh, let's not really let's just lay the bare minimum foundation and then we'll do more later. And it, it, so it feels a little lazy in that regard. And I think it's because a lot of these people probably wrote their stuff at the same time. And then editors were trying to pull their hairs out, trying to make get it all together and make it make sense. Maybe I don't know. Or maybe they all got on a Zoom call and wrote this together and just you know, divvied up like, like TV writers do. But I would, I would guess that probably that is what happened because it's written like a bad TV show where secrets are kept for no reason. Why there's no reason why Flash can't tell Hank about Sleeper. Um, there's no reason why Arthur couldn't have been exposed at the end. Uh, there's no reason for so many things in this book. Um, and <laughs> so I don't know what, where they'll go from here. I wish them luck. You know, for me, this is the end for me as far as like reviewing new Venom stuff. Um, I will not be on a monthly basis reviewing Venom books anymore um, on the Venom blog. Whether the show ends, you know, abruptly because of, you know, health reasons or if it still goes on and I still pump out episodes up until, you know, another movie comes out or something. Like to me, I, I just... I, I, we had, I wish I jumped off before Donny Cates, to be honest with you. But John, Donny Cates, I guess we jumped off there and uh, where they're going next with venom being a god eddie being a god or whatever he is i mean he could have wrapped this up in two seconds and no one could have died. no one had to die if eddie just got involved but for whatever reason tony haphazardly handed this to flash and flash dropped the ball on this one in my opinion and people died that didn't have to die um because you know they just had a, a just a horrible plan they didn't even have a plan that was the thing and that's frustrating coming from flash and some people might argue say well he just came back from the dead maybe he's a little sloppy maybe he's a little of that um yeah but right when he came back from the dead he fought null and he was a big white dragon and he did a bunch of cool stuff kind of so uh so i i don't think that's an excuse at all so for me it was just okay uh, you know and i i rambled long on, uh, enough about this so i'm gonna try to go to bed now and maybe record one more episode and then go to bed but uh, that's my thoughts on the ending of extreme carnage if you feel the same, if you feel different, whatever it is, if you think I'm some kind of pompous you know, a-hole who knows everything about writing, that's not the case at all. I don't know everything about writing. I don't know everything about editing. I don't even know what exactly everyone who worked on these books did. I'm just guessing, and maybe I'm making an ass of myself by doing that. But I do know in the end result, I do know what doesn't work and what is inconsistent between the books. And that, in my opinion, can't be disputed. Um, so for those reasons are why I'm not loving this and why i just think it's okay because obviously mistakes are a human thing to make so it's easy to you know have oversights on books like these when you're trying to get them out monthly but i just felt like there was too many considering how many editors were on this book just felt like there was too many inconsistencies and uh, and that 
I have to take for me I have to take points away for and it it took me out of the book it made me enjoy it a lot less um, but again let me know your thoughts down below and we'll talk down there thanks so much for watching the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and I'll see you all in the future peace